these mutations in principle are not something to be afraid of. Let's say viruses change, evolve, they mutate, and most of them are absolutely neutral. So we identified, let's say, a subset of the mutations, a small percentage of the mutations that seem to be appearing over and again in the virus in different strains, which might suggest that, let's say, it, they might reflect, to some extent, adaptation to the human host. But let's say at this stage, I'd really like to clarify that there is no evidence that we are seeing more virulent or more transmissible lineages. So I, I, I'm, it's not so bad. There have been thousands and thousands of, of genomes of SARS-CoV-2 that have been sequenced from throughout the world. And what is quite wonderful is all these labs and scientists who are actually sharing this information with other scientists. And so essentially any, anyone can access this information. And we analyzed the first 7,500 or so complete genomes. And But our real objective, our initial objective, was actually to identify the regions in the uh, SARS-CoV-2 genome, SARS genome that are less variable. So essentially, regions of the genome that are constraints, where change doesn't happen easily. And these are also the best targets for vaccines and drugs. There are currently about over 100 vaccines in development. Some of them are very likely to succeed. However, what is also important for the kind of long-run success of these vaccines is that they target regions of the virus which cannot easily change because some regions just can't change. There's an optimum and organisms have a limited kind of possibility to change these regions. And this is really what we're looking for, essentially. It's these regions which are constrained and which will offer vaccines and hopefully some kind of possibly drug for which it's not easy to say that the virus won't find easy to escape from.